Hello everyone, welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take this image right here, and it has some issues on it. It's a little bit soft, we're going to take care of that with uh, Sharpen AI, do a little denoising on it. Um, we're going to use Mask AI, blur the background out a little bit. It starts out looking like this, and it ends up looking like this. I have some really cool little uh, techniques and tricks to show you. You're going to learn a lot, so stay tuned and let's get started. I started out by just making some basic adjustments in Lightroom and then brought it right here into Photoshop. So I'm going to start from here. Uh, so let's zoom into this image here. and You can see the flowers are pretty soft. We're going to fix that in Sharpen AI. There's a little bit of noise in here. I could probably just take care of this in Sharpen AI because there's really good noise reduction in there too. But I'm going to follow through with my typical workflow. And that is after I duplicate my background layer, I'm going to go ahead and launch Topaz Denoise AI because this is my workflow and this is the way I like to do it. And I want to show you the new way I'm uh, working with uh, Topaz Denoise AI. First off, what I'm going to do is shut off auto update and I'm going to pull back the sharpening the whole way because I'm going to sharpen with uh, Sharpen AI. And I'm going to pull my noise back as well. And now I can turn auto update on. Okay, because then every time I move a slider, it'll auto update. So let's go ahead and zoom in to say 200%. And the image on the left will show the noise or the original, the image on the right will be after the denoise, but I haven't done anything yet. So, you know what, let's even zoom into, let's even come into 400%. Let me find an area where we can really see the noise. So there you can see the noise. It's, it's not real noisy because we are zoomed into 400%. But here's my new method. I'll take the noise, I'll start to move it up. And as you can see there, it cleaned it up right away. Let me pull it back a little bit. What I like to do is just pull it back till I see a little bit of noise which maybe right there and then just bump it up a little bit extra here and I think that looks good and then I'll just click apply and that'll send it right back into Photoshop and next we'll send it into Sharpen AI but my noise is totally gone at this point now for some Sharpen AI to fix this uh, focus issue on this flower and I love Sharpen AI because man it saves me so many bad shots because I hand hold pretty much everything and I don't always get the right focus because the camera moves a little bit and it knocks me out of focus. So let's go ahead to filter and we're going to open up Sharpen AI and see if we can fix this bleeding heart. I love bleeding hearts and it's a great time of the year, the spring here. Whoops, let's go to view. Let's do a, uh, let's do a split view here. And I'm going to try the focus model first. And let's come here to focus. I have auto update shut off. So I'm going to take my suppressed noise. This is my new workflow. I shut that the whole way off because I already did noise reduction with denoise AI. So there's no need to do it again. So now let's take our sharpness and let's turn our auto update on. And it's going to start to update right away. It's defaulted at 50 here. So let's see what the focus can do here. And just give it a second or two and it will be ready. Okay, already it's a lot better. Let me bump the sharpness up even more. I'm going to take it the whole way up just to see what we get. Okay. Yeah, and right there it's a lot better. Now let me move this uh, this line over here. Yeah, so there we can see. Might just be a smidge too sharp there. Let me just pull it back a little bit. Take another look here. It's all about experimentation. Move these sliders around and see what you get. That looks better. Let me click apply and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Now look at that flower right there. Now let me shut this uh, Sharpen AI layer off. There's the before 
and there's the after. Look at the sharpness and detail brought back in. I didn't want to make it over sharp. I could have sharpened it up more, but I thought I want to keep it delicate. It's a beautiful, delicate, bleeding heart flower. And uh, next, what I'm going to do is I want to blur this background out a little bit more. I like the depth of field I got in this image, but I wish I had a little bit more soft, creamy bokeh in the background. And my new favorite tool for uh, adding extra bokeh to my background is one of my favorites, Topaz Mask AI. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this background layer. Command or Control J. Come to Filter, and now we're going to launch Mask AI, and we will get started with the blurring of the background. Plus, I think also darken the background up a little bit, too. I think that's really going to be a nice addition, and we can do it all right here inside of Mask AI. If you haven't seen me use uh, Mask AI before, it basically works with a system called a tribe map, and there's three colors, green being keep. That's why the image looks green right now. Red uh, meaning cut and blue meaning compute. So the way it works is what you want to do is get the compute brush and draw around the areas that you want Mask AI to figure out. Like I want to keep this area here. So I'm just drawing around the areas in blue that I want uh, Mask AI to calculate. Now I want these, um, these other bleeding hearts, even though they're out of focus, I want to keep them right in the focus that they were shot at in the camera. So I'm going to draw the compute around here. Even this leaf right, leaf right here, I want to keep it at the same focus that the camera had. And I love Mask AI because it lets me make these determinations. And maybe just right like so. And let me finish painting the compute area around this bleeding heart. It's very easy to do, actually. Hardest part is painting around the edges of things. If you have a subject that's easy to determine, you can just come up here and click on Auto Detect Subjects. It wouldn't do too good of a job around here because it wouldn't really know what I wanted. So I'm going to make its mind up for it. Okay, and I'm going to leave these leaves out for now. If I want to bring these back, I'll show you how I can bring these back in Photoshop. But I just want to get the tough areas right now. So right here. And then the only thing I have to do is get this red bucket right here and click right like this. And these are the areas that I want to keep. And now right here too, I want to get rid of that right there. And now let's go ahead and click Compute. Now you have two modes. You have AI and Contrast. If it's a simple mask, just use uh, Contrast. If it's a more complicated mask, use Compute. Now with these blurry edges here, any any masking with blurry edges can be tricky but you'll see here that mask ai will get the job done so let me go ahead and uh, click compute mask and we'll let this thing compute itself out and we'll have to do some adjustments to it but i'll show you how that's done here real quick so let's go ahead and here's our masked out uh, flower here now there's some issues in it we'll fix them but first let's go to background and let's click on blur all right and First thing I want to do is pull my blur strength. Let's take it the whole way off so we can see the original image. Now let's just slowly start to build it up. Just to the area of blur that we want. Now I don't want to make it like this, you know. So I just want a little bit of extra, like I said, a little bit of extra bokeh in there. Not a whole lot, but maybe, maybe somewhere right around in there, okay? And uh, now we'll go ahead and fix the uh, areas that need fixed. Now the image on the left is the original. The image on the right is with the blur. So right now we're seeing the tri map, but you see this little checkbox right here. Just give it a click and we can see the original image. Now I have this strength at 11. I think I want a little extra blur in there. So I'm just going to bump it up to about maybe a 17. Now I'll just compare the image on the left to the image on the right. Yeah, it's a little more creamier and dreamier. And this leaf looks really nice. Everything here looks good. Things look good here. This stem we may want to bring back in. So now we can come in and zoom in and kind of examine if we have any issues here. Now all we need to do is go to mask and now we have um, our three brushes, Compute, Keep, and Cut, and we can use either any of these brushes to do our correction. So I'm going to go on Keep, make my brush a little smaller with my left bracket key, 
And all you have to do is just give this a little paint right here, just like that. Watch that'll magically fix itself. Do you see that? And then you can compare the image on the left. So, and I can even paint on the image on the left. See, here's the area I want to come back in. Now watch it'll come right back in. See that? Isn't that cool? And that looks good. Let's examine this little bud here. Everything looks pretty good there. This I'm comparing these two sides. Things look good here. This little piece coming out here. I'll probably heal that in Photoshop. I'll just leave it the way it is here. That's looking nice. Now, I just have to determine. Now, Mask AI left this piece out right across here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that out. And I'm going to use, I'll show you in Photoshop how I'll just blend this in a little bit. That'll show you some more little, uh, little uh, tricks and techniques. Let's look over here. That looks really good. So, you know what? I think it's actually pretty good. There was just a few little areas that needed fixed. And let's zoom back out. By the way, you have different ways of viewing uh, the mask. Uh, so let's go to show all windows. This is the actual mask itself, what it looks like. This is the cut area. The actual image part is the part that's getting cut. This is the keep over here. And you can see my blurred background. And this is the original. But what I want to do is go to show one window here. Because what I want to do right now, let's make our image a little bit bigger. And right now you're seeing the original, but see this little apple right here? Click it and you have choices, mask. So you can see the mask or you can see the keep or you can see the cut. I want to see the keep. So right there. And let's go back to background. And now we have uh, different things we can adjust. We can adjust the background. If we click this drop down, we can adjust the foreground. This is really a nice feature. And you'll see what I mean here. I want to just darken the background a little bit. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this exposure and just pull it back. And you notice it's only darkening the background. And I love that because it's making my bleeding heart just really pop off. I don't want it to go too dark, but maybe somewhere right around in there. Now I can work with its temperature so I can warm up that background or cool the background down. You know, whatever I want to do. But the temperature I think is good, so I'm just going to leave it right where it is. I might take the tint. If I move the tint to the right, it'll make it more magenta. But if I take the tint and move it to the left, I can make it a little more green. Do you see that? I just might take it a little bit towards the green side of things. Maybe somewhere right around there. Now, I could take the saturation and pull the saturation off the background, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave the saturation right where it was. I think it looked good. And uh, I think I'm good. Do I like the blur? I think I like the blur. I think I'm good to go. And let's go ahead and click Apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. But first, I have two options here. I can send it as a composite. That will be with this blurry background. That's a composited image with the blurry background. Or I could send it as a transparent. That would just send uh, the layer mask back to Photoshop. Okay. And I really want the composite, so I'm just going to click Composite, and we'll send us right back into Photoshop. Here's our composited image on this layer right here. And so let's shut this eye off here so we can see where we've come from and see if we made an improvement. So here's the before and here is the after. But you see how that nice little extra softness and darkening that background up slightly just really makes that those bleeding hearts pop off the page. And if, mainly this guy right here. Okay, so let's take a look. So here's the before. And here's the after. I'm really happy with that. If you recall this area right in here when I was making the mask and mask AI, I intentionally left this off. And the reason I did that really was to show you how to fix things in Photoshop. All right. And let me show you what I would do. Now, mask AI sent this image back with a mask intact. And it's just the white mask here. And right now I have my paintbrush with 100% opacity and 100% flow. All I'm going to do is paint with black paint to reveal the image underneath here, okay? So I'm gonna type my X key. And what I'm gonna do is just paint that branch back in here like so, over to here. And there's a little bit of a piece of, yeah, a little branch coming down to this bleeding heart right here, all right? And now what I need to do is, it's a little light here and a little light here, because remember I darkened the background. So I'm gonna get a bigger brush uh, paint with uh, white paint now and just uh, correct that edge right there. And I'm just painting with the soft edge of the brush and just 
100% just moving in and letting the blurring effect on the edge of the brush fix that little issue and even right around in here see that it just cleans it right up now I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller so I can come in here and clean this I'm just gonna come in here on the edge here a little bit clean up this edge like so now I'm gonna make the brush a little bit bigger and use the feathered edge just to blend just to blend that like that let's blend that up in there like so and over here like so I'm just coming in there close and you'll never know that I fixed that so there's that and there's a little mistake over here I'll make this brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to be painting with black paint just to reveal the underlying leaf just the blurry edge of that underlying leaf right there and this area right here, watch, I'm just going to go over the whole thing like this. And then get the opposite color paint, which is white, with that nice soft edge. And just paint along the edge here with that soft edge. Just blend that in. We're almost done. I want to put a blank pixel layer above this layer right here. So I'm going to come down here and click this icon. And there's a blank pixel layer. This is a technique I've showed you in the past. This is golden, so remember this one. I'm, I'm not hiding anything from you guys, so... I'm using a brush here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. But there's a lot of things in here that I don't like. These yellow spots up in here. This little spot right here. I'd like to darken this corner off over here. Some of these light areas I want to tone down with some, add some like green color to them. Just to blend this image in a little bit better. But this is a really cool technique. And what you do is make sure you have your opacity 100%, your flow. Put it at 5%. To get there, go Shift-0-5. That's a shortcut that'll put your flow down to 5%. Hold your Alt or Option key down when you, when you have your paintbrush and the little um, selector tool comes up. Select a color close to the area you want to change. See that little green right there? I want to change that, so I'm going to select this color right here. And with that low flow, just kind of blend that away. The more I uh, move my brush, the more that's going to go away. Now this area right here, I'm going to sample this color and just paint away to it's gone. Now remember that background's blurred. Nobody will ever know that you've done this. Like these yellow spots up in here, I'm going to sample this color and just paint over the yellow with this color right here. And then I'll grab another color and blend that in like that, like that a little bit. And here, I might just want to darken this down a little bit. I'm just going to... Add a little extra darkening paint here. Now this light area right here, I'm going to sample this color and just do this. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off, but you just want to sample and blend. But that low flow is your secret here. And then when I'm finished, I'll get right back to you. And I am back. So there you go. There's the finished result there after this painting layer. So let me click this eye off here so you can see. Here's the before and here's the after. Just a little bit of hand painting. Simple to do. Just remember, option click colors around the area you want to change and use that 5% flow and just slowly blend that in until you get it looking like this. One final thing to do, and that's let's get a lasso tool. I'm going to type L to get the lasso tool. I just want to make a vignette around the edge of this thing. I'm going to draw just a shape with my lasso tool, just an organic shape like this, getting squiggly lines and so on and so forth. And just going like this here. And now what I'm going to do is uh, click on the adjustment layers here, get a curves adjustment layer. All right. And when I do that, you'll notice I have a layer mask with it. Now I need to invert that layer mask. So that's command or control I to invert the layer mask. So now it's black on the inside. The uh, white area will get the effect. I'm going to change the blend mode of this curves layer from normal to multiply. But before I do that, let me go ahead to the curves right here. See this little uh, circle here, black circle in the middle here. Click on this and you'll get these tools up here or these sliders, density and feather. Take that feather and drag it up a good ways. So probably around like 200, 300. And you can come back here and change this. But watch what happens. I'm putting a feathered edge on here. Now when I change this blend mode from normal to multiply, Look how it just nicely feathers a nice soft vignette around there. Now that's too strong, so come to your opacity, take it the whole way off. And now just slowly build it up. You don't want somebody to know you put a vignette there, but you just want to 
you know, draw their attention to the center of your image. So we're just going to darken those corners down or the edges of the image down a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit more, maybe somewhere right around there. Now let me uh, click this layer off and on. And there it is. That little vignette is a nice finishing touch. If you're not happy with your feathered edge, you can take this feathering and if you need more feathering, move it to the right. If you need less feathering, move it to the left. And you could take the whole way off and it would look like that, right? So, you know, just build it up and stop where you say, hey, that excites me. And I'm thinking maybe right around there. But we're finished. I thought we were finished, but I examined my image and I noticed I missed the spot with my mask right here. I didn't see that till just a few minutes ago. And also, I have a little mark on my bleeding heart that I, that I would like to fix. So here's what I'll do. I'll put another blank pixel layer above this layer. I'll do that same technique where I get my brush, put it on 5% flow, sample a color in here, get a nice big brush, and just paint over it with that paint color, and just blend that in. These are the little tricks. You know, these are golden and... Remember these things because these are lifesavers. And that's why I like to work in Photoshop because you just never know. You know the old adage, you can fix it in Photoshop and how many times has that come true? So just like that, sample those colors. It's all blurry, nobody will ever know. I could even get some of that pink and just go like that and just fake that out a little bit. And the other thing was I can heal this. I can use the same blank layer. Get a healing brush. I'm typing J for my uh, healing brush tool. Make my brush a little smaller and just give that a little bloop. And make sure sample all layers is checked. And now I am really happy with it. I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, tutorial today. I am a flower photographer and this is my specialty. I'm showing you all my different tips and tricks like I said earlier. So Hopefully you learned a lot from this one. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. Hey, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon, and then you'll be uh, notified each time I upload a new tutorial. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, as always, happy editing.